today is today is the ninth of the second 2020. You know, the Lord God Almighty, He knew that it all turned pear shaped on earth. And so uh, He singled it all out and culled it all and, and, and came to do one thing, which, which is drastically needed in the world and that was to discipline he, he could have called his followers something else you know um, he could have called them uh, uh, influencers or influenza or coronavirus but he said no no he said I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what Adam and Eve undone. And that's the discipline. Oh, I don't want that. No, we don't want that. Not, not in 2020. The year of no discipline. Hey? We want to do our own thing. Don't tell me what to do. I want to do it my way. That's the new show on television tonight. My way. My way. I'd rather do it Yah's way. Yahweh meaning Lord of a warring people. So let's welcome Brother Michael back again today. Uh, yeah, Sister Sue, Brother Michael, Brother Michael, Sister Sue. Yeah, she just came in there. And... Uh, yeah, keeping things nice and simple. Because if we don't, we're going to end up simpletons. And the Lord, as I say, He came to Edge of Mercators in the spiritual because, you know, the soul ran rampant in Eden. The devil opened the door. And the world runs on solid power. See all the solar panels everywhere. Every time you see a solar panel from now on, just think Satan introduced the solar, unleashed the soul power. But Jesus came to discipline the soul and bring it into submission to his spirit via the established canon. It's already established, the doctrine of the Christ. It's already rock solid. It's established. We can trust. We can put all our eggs in the one basket called Buddha. No, I mean Jesus. We can put all our eggs in the one basket called Mohammed. No, Jesus. We can put all our eggs in the one basket called the Pope. No, Jesus. Put all our eggs in the one basket call money. No, 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 no. No. So what's going on around us? Well, we've had drought for how many decades? And then the fires came in a big way recently. Now there's floods. And we see that in the scriptures, don't we? Down on the uh, Gold Coast and... Western suburbs of Brisbane, they're just washing them away. Byron Bay, washed out shops, there was landslides and uh, extreme water levels. Unseen, they said, unseen. In many years at Byron Bay. I just hope they keep making the Byron Bay sauce, because we use Byron Bay sauce. The mild, the, the hot is just too mind-blowing. It's a lovely sauce, the Byron Bay sauce. I like it on a steak or a bit of noodle or something. Israel Folau, making a fool out of himself again. And uh, we see the scriptures come alive, you know, when we, we, we hear of people... They, they say they're superstars and sports stars. 
and they're claiming Christ at the same time, whether it's a... I was going to say Margaret Thatcher. No, she never claimed Christ. She was faithful to herself and her call, whatever that was. But, uh, yeah, Margaret Court, she's trying to do the world and Jesus at the same time too. We can't do that. We, you can't please man and God. We have to make our choice. Unless the man is a godly man, which cancels out any part of the world. But Israel Folau, um, he had a, a private lunch with uh, the owner. Owner, we're talking big dollars. Owner, owner of the Catalan Dragons Rugby League Club, French club. And the Bible talks about, you know, giving yourself over to um, the wealthy and food and being snaring yourself. And Mr. Falau said, well, this is what the, the, the owner of the Catalan Dragons Rugby Club said. When Falau left Australia and went over to France, he, he invited him to his home. So, you know, getting nice and personal there. I don't know if Falau allowed this to be said, but the owner of the club said, uh, I had a good talk with Israel and he, 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 through his darkened mind, he thought that uh, Israel Falau... Um, was polite well the devil is too you asked Eve polite and honest honest? I, I mean are you for real? honest the blind leading the blind don't they and he said that Israel Falau said that he, he, his aim is in 2020 how's this for a name? this guy claims Christ but it, it's another Jesus for sure. He says, my aim is to um, restore my image in my first love, rugby league. <laughs> I mean, that, that's enough for a wise man, isn't it? To know that man does not walk with the Jesus of the Bible. If you, if you have any sort of image before you come to the Jesus of the Bible, Jesus is going to wipe it out. I mean, even the Christ himself, our, our, our mentor and, 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 and leader and, and saviour, emptied himself of all divinity and, and became of no reputation. So Israel, sitting at the table of the wealthy football club owner, you can't be on the dole and own a football club. And he spilled his guts, see? Spill his guts to this bloke. And this bloke then uh, said that he... Um, it says in the Fox Sports News that Israel opened up, got personal. Spill his guts to this bloke. And, they, and then he puts it up on the, for the public to read. His first love, rugby league. Well, you've got to be careful when you eat at anyone's time or, and not to be taken back, huh? especially in these days. So, um, moving right along, I mean, before I, I do move along, do, do dead men, do they have an image or do they want to restore their old Edemic image? Or? I, I don't believe so. The only image they have is, uh, according to scripture, is scum of the earth, off scour. You know, I've been there. I was a reverend. You know, I rev it up with my certificates. 
Reverend in America. Reverend in the Philippines. Both big Pentecostal churches. And then Jesus said, stop your reverend and give that ridiculous piece of paper back to them and tell them to repent and be saved. Because there's only one reverend and there's only one to be revered. His name is? Francis. No. Jesus. 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 <laughs> uh, okay. But it's once saved, always saved, isn't it? What does it say in the writings of Jude? Can we go there, please? Jude is just before the book of Revelation. If you don't read it much, I don't read Jude much. Hey, Jude. Let's go to Jude and let's go to this one particular verse. 24. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Saviour, who alone is wise, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, now and forever. Amen. You see that? Keep you from stumbling. Well, that's a Pentecostal cracker, isn't it? She's a beauty, that one. Oh, I stumble. You know, they're always doing the smoky. Just a stumbling in. Da, 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 da. And I'm laying my heart on the table, stumbling in. Always stumbling. Oh, I, I made a mistake. Sin is not a mistake. Sin is deliberate. Just like not sin is deliberate. Keep you from stumbling and present you faultless. Oh, no one's faultless, only Jesus. But it's he that's able to do that if we're willing to listen to he. He died on the tree for you, and me and us and them and all who call upon his name that we may have might fight 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 faithfully from Father to the friends everyone said amen. and amen ninth of the second twenty twenty Paradise Now Church Sunday me <clears throat> You know that's the scriptures that talk about keep 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 your garments clean. What would you need to do that for if it's once saved, always saved? If it's Charles Spurgeon or, you know, if it's Brian Houston. Or, what do you want to keep your garments clean for? Aren't they always clean? Didn't all, isn't all the sin paid for? Prepaid sin? You know? At Vodafone or whatever? What are you going to keep your garments clean for? Let's turn there, please, and into the next book, the book of Revelation. Can we go to Revelation chapter 3, please? 3. I'm going to start reading in verse 3. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. What? You don't have to repent there. Therefore, if... You will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You, who have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and his angels. Before who? Before himself and himself. That's a bit of Israel Falau stuff there. A bit of any Falau. Jesus is Jesus. Jesus is Father and Jesus is Holy Ghost. No. My father 
my father and his angels. It's very clear, isn't it? And what colour is the print? It's red, isn't it? Red means run, son. Numbers add up to nothing. Come on. Red. 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 Blood. Red. Jesus speaking. He he said it was him speaking. That's what it says in Revelation chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to John. It's it's not the revelation of John. They say John the revelator. No, it's the revelation of Jesus. That he gave to John. Amen? Amen. So we have Father, my Father, who art in heaven. You see that? And he says, which we see here the blotting out of a name. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you can't lose your salvation. You don't have to keep your garments clean. What for? I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, the Pentecostal say. You, know, you can't work your way to heaven. You can't work your way to heaven. Who's working their way to heaven? Just doing what Jesus said. Amen. So, moving right along, you know, the average prisoner, the average man or woman in jail, costs the taxpayers 3,000 bucks a week. What do you think of that? You know, these guys that rob banks and do all these things, you know what, they, they, <laughs> Centrelink would be better off giving them 1,000 bucks a week, just not, not to commit crimes. And if they're hard, hard to impress, give them $2,000 a week. It's better than the taxpayers paying $3,000 a week, isn't it? To keep them inside a concrete barrier. Hey? 172,000 acres of land has been infested with locusts. It's the worst locust plague in 70 years. $76 million uh, is needed to help not stop but control the plague. 90% of agricultural production lost in Ethiopia, of all places. That was sent in by Brother Blade this week. Plague after plague, isn't it? Plague after plague. But the big plagues, are th- these are only forerunners. The big kahunas are yet to come. Wuhan in China. Food is diminishing. People are panicking. There's uh, more dying daily. People are getting very angry. And there's plague, this corona plague is spreading like wildfire and it's been said that it's going to infect a hundred million people before March 2020 because it's going to go through Asia like wildfire. We are in the last days, it really is time to get serious, not physical, with Olivia uh, Newton, John, the pot smoker. It's time to get spiritual, spiritual. I gotta get spiritual. Hey, let me hear the scriptures, please. Scriptures, please. I just want to throw this one in, as I've seen many lacking sleep and putting their alarm clocks on and. I praise God. I never set an alarm, ever. This is what I do before I close my eyes. Because the moment I close my eyes, I go to sleep. Because my conscience is clear.
clean hands. I say, Jesus, I know that I've got to do this and that tomorrow. I have to be up at 3.30. And then I wake up at 3.30. Every time. Or it might be, Lord, thank you for the blessing that I can get up at 5 tomorrow. And then I go to sleep and wake up at 5. <laughs> oh dear. You know, there's people going deaf because they got plugs in their ears all day in phone. The devil's work to stop you from hearing the gospel on the streets. And then there's other people uh, taking all kinds of medications for issues and problems they don't need to take it for. And uh, the world, they think they're ahead of Jesus, but they're so far behind. It's just not funny. Um, yeah. I thought I had something written down here about the statistics of people doing what they don't really have to do. Super Chef Heston Bloom Mental. Mental, more like it. Bloomerton. He owes $4.5 million to his workers. Why bother telling me that? Because it talks about that in James 5 1. That Mr. Heston Bloomfield is heading for hell. There's heavy judgment weighing up for him. He's holding back the wages of the laborer. And we see it more and more every day. Every second person I talk to, they, they say they're, they're being ripped off by the boss. And I can't help hearing it as I'm in the aisles of the shopping centre when the workers, especially Coles and Woolworth, whinging about their wages. And I worked overtime and I never got paid and done this, done that. I, I just can't help hearing it. And I'm thinking, James 5 1. James 5 1. James, Holy Ghost says, James 5 1. Their judgment is coming, these rip off merchants. Living the high life on the Labrador's wages. Hey? Now there's not just the, the plagues of locusts and, and uh, drought and fires and flood. Now there's an unstoppable, uh, the news, not me, the news said it was a biblical plague proportion of bats in, in Ingham, it, driving the, the whole town insane. The mess, the disease, everything that comes with it. Biblical plague proportions. And yet... The authorities say, oh, don't touch the bat. It, it, it's a protected species. Really? So, you know, animals first. That's the program. People second, Jesus last. That's a nice covenant, that one, that the devil has made. <laughs> School teachers being abused uh, like never before being kicked, spat on, furniture thrown at them, uh, one teacher per day gets abused in Australia, at least. Spat on, even stabbed. Signs of the times, isn't it? No more tolerance. There's no more uh, discipline. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5 tells it all, doesn't it? The Super Bowl. If you're interested in sport, the Super Bowl. We're charging $6,000 a ticket to watch the gridiron finals. $6,000 a ticket. Gee, I wouldn't mind an offering like that off each person that comes through the door on every Sunday. <coughs> Sweet. And they're going to hear a lot more uh, and, and receive a lot more than see some ball getting thrown around on the grass. 
Yeah. The Chiefs won apparently after 50 years of trying. Well, they didn't get there. I'm going to finish by letting you in, letting you in on the most uh, best kept secret ever of the Mormons. The Mormons' investment funds amount. Wait for it. Can we get a drum roll there? This is the morons. I mean the Mormons. Their investment fund has amounted to one hundred, not million, billion dollars. And as soon as I read that, I thought I heard a small voice say to me, "Silver and gold have I none." I thought that must be Peter. That that must be the Holy Ghost telling me what Peter said, reminding me. But the Roman Catholic Church, if if it can be imagined, they still rule the financial rules. So imagine what they got. It has been said that the Bank of England can't pay for just the artwork in the Vatican. So. There must be a bit of Da Vinci stuff hanging on the walls. Hey? They just, the Bank of England can't pay for the artwork in the Vatican. I mean, we're not looking at anything else. Let's go into the message today. We're still in the fear of the Lord series. A worthy topic, isn't it? You know, especially when people find out how simple it is and how frightening. It is not to fear the Lord. Hey? It's a frightening thing. Paul the Apostle said that, to fall into the hands of not a dead God, but the living God. This is why Paul spoke as he did. His ministry consisted of teaching and warning as an apostolic man. And all the signs and wonders followed Paul because he was a real bona fide apostle. He wasn't some Bible college apostle. There's no such animal. Someone say amen. Amen. No such creature as a Bible college apostle or a Bible college prophet. Maybe a P-R-O-F-I-T. Bible college P-R-O-F-I-T. Bible college evangelist. Evangelist school. Hogwarts. True evangelists go by the leading of the Spirit. That's a true evangelist. A a true evangelist can't stop preaching. He he can't hold his mouth. Because the Holy Ghost has hit him hard. A a true evangelist, look, if he's married, he, he preaches in his sleep. His wife forever says, oh, shut up, will you, for a while? Because he can't stop preaching. You know? <laughs> a true bona fide teacher is, speaks as the oracles of God. And his teaching is very simple, but very profound. But very simple. There's no this or the thou thou's of the onto interetticus that just passes by, you know. There's none of that. Jesus, the great teacher, he's very simple, very... That's why the Pharisees railed at him. Because what he said was so simple uh, and so profound, it, it, it ticked every box that needed to be ticked on the subject, yet it, he just said it so simply. You know, he wasn't really voluminous, was he? He only really had one book, the Holy Bible, and he, uh, the, the, the express words of Jesus amount to, I think it's about uh, uh, 10 or more uh, A4 sheets when you sum it all up. But what's in there, you, you can write till the 12th of never. 
what you find in there, what, what he says through that, you know, little, little is much in the master's hand, but it has to be in the master's hand. You know, we have to be in his hand in, in order for him to do much. And much is not necessarily voluminous or big in, in size. It can be very small to the naked eye, but very great in the Master's plan. Amen? As it says in Luke about in the land of Zarephath, Sidon, many lepers, he went to one, the prophet went to one, Elijah, Elijah. Widows, many widows went to one. Amen? My wife and I are going to LA soon. Uh, do a bit of a street search. Eh? Looking for the lost souls. To tell them of the peace of the Saviour when, when we trust in Him. Might go to one here and one there. And, you know? When you look at the prophets of old, they weren't really mass media preachers, were they? You know? There was occasions when they dressed a few. You know? Jesus addressed the multitude. He was a prophet and a teacher and a pastor and an evangelist, all in one head. And God, and the Son of God, and the Son of Man, and man, Galilee, uh, man from Galilee, lowly Nazarene, uh, Slain lamb, buried lamb, risen lamb, lamb within, lamb lord, lion lamb lord, <laughs> lamb lord God, lamb lord redeemer, uh, lamb deliverer, slain, lamb here. The two or more gathered in his name. I am in the midst. Lamb here. Not ham, lamb. So let's go into our message today. We're going to be reading today in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and we can go to verse 1. Better still, let's go to verse 11. That makes it, we can cut to the chase. 2 Corinthians 6, 11. Brother Shadrach, when you're ready. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. To you. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now in return for the same, I speak as the children, you also be open. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteous with lawlessness? And what communion has light with dark? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement? has the temple of God with idols. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God. They shall be my peoples. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and then I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You see that? So today I'm in verse seven. Uh, I'm in verse eighteen. I want to highlight that because we're doing the fear of the Lord, and we're in the F, the fear of. We've done the omniscient. Fear of the Lord. The F is for Father. I will be 
a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now, most people, if not all, over their lifetime have, have had issues with their father or issues with their mother or issues with some relative and they never quite gotten over it. You know, the fear of the Lord, we, we really must respect what Father has done for us and, and how great a Father He is. I mean, they have Father's Day, but that's quite useless. A, a natural Father can never do what God the Father can do for you. Never in a million years. I like the way that Jesus cuts to the chase and, and he deals with everything through the cross, through, you know, the outworking of Christ just opened up vast uh, acres of blessing and resolve and, and revival and restitution and reformation. I don't really like to use that word reformation much, you know, because that's going back a bit and, and when Jesus sorted it at the cross... We're more in the revelation now, aren't we? We're, we're, once we get the revelation, we sail past reformation and reform and we go into the zenith and there's so much more awaiting us than what uh, Martin Luther done. Luther lacked too, you know? And as we go along in these days, the Lord is showing us and really opening up the scriptures and opening up who He is and Father and the Holy Ghost. So um, we really must respect Father. Amen? We really must. We started off the Fear of the Lord series with, with the F, with faith, F-E-A-R, and then Esteeming, esteeming God is above all, and then we came to the accepting uh, and accepting what the Lord said, agreeing with what the Lord said, acknowledging. That was the A in fear, and then we moved into the R. Uh, I think that was. Uh, Respect, and, and then we had a we had a couple of series, uh, I should say, a, a couple of messages, a few messages on respect, and then we moved into uh, O, which was the omniscience. I mean, who would not revere, respect someone who's omniscient, someone who's omnipotent, someone who is omnipresent? I don't know anyone like that. Only God, only Yahweh, only the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The three men I admire most. So today, um, I want to highlight that Father knows best, not Mother. As they say in the world, Mother knows best, but it's Father knows best. And I mean, even Jesus said that, didn't he? If we just Turn in our Bibles to Luke 22. Can we go there? See, once we know who's who in the religious zoo, uh, and, and we know what's to be done. I mean, Paul speaking to the Corinthians here, he, he's saying what's to be done, isn't he? If you want Father to be your Father... So let's go to Luke 22 and let's start reading in, um, so, verse 40. And when he came to the place, he said, 
to them, pray that you do not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father. You see that? He's not saying self. He didn't say Jesus, did he? He said, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me, nevertheless, not my will, but yours. Look, we, we, we got two different persons here. Can someone say amen? Read it with me. Look down and read it and see it for yourself. Get it into your heart. This is not oneness, scripture. This is Jesus talking to another person. Father. Verse 43. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony... He prayed more earnestly. Then the sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. I'm going to leave it there. A lot of churches say his sweat become like blood. No, it never. No, it never become like blood. It said... Well, it, it never became blood. It became light. The sweat was congealing. You know, the sweat... This is an extreme... This is an extreme to sweating normally. You know what I mean? This is an extreme. But what I want to nail here is... Jesus even looked to Father, didn't he? So, we must want to do Father's will as Jesus wanted to do Father's will. Father, if it is your will, you know, if we respect, if we fear God, we want to do Father's will. We don't want to do our own will, do we? Yes, we do when we're Adamic. What am I going to do for me today? Listen, the converted, the converted can become unconverted. But the converted want to do Father's will. Because that is the conversion and part thereof to be converted from you wanting your own way. <laughs> and you wanting Father's. We've got the man Jesus here. Amen. We've got the man Jesus speaking. Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And the moment he said that, then the angel came and strengthened him. Is that right? Look, I don't, if I had a dollar for every person that came to me, over 32 years of ministry and said they were weak I said well it's obvious you're not wanting to do Father's will you're not wanting to and you're not doing it you know when you want to do when you do Father's will you're strong automatically nevertheless not my will but yours Father, be done. Then an angel appeared to him. This was immediate and gave him strength. Right? There's much benefit in fearing the Lord. Right? There's much benefit in respecting God. Putting him above. Right? It pays to fear Father. So what's he saying in 2 Corinthians 6? We've got a whole list, haven't we? That's left unattended in churches today. That's 
why they're in the shape they're in. They're discontent. Hey? The Adamic man, the unconverted man and woman, they're, they're never content. I don't care what you do for them. That's how you know you're Adamic and solid. Never content. You know, before I come to Jesus, I was never content. I don't care what motorcycle I bought. I don't care what woman I was with. I don't care what drugs I was taking. I don't care. How much booze I drank. I drank. One was too many and a hundred was not enough. Before I come to Jesus. It doesn't matter. It didn't matter. How, uh, working in the mines. I was getting big dollars doing nothing. I had nice motorcycles. If I... You used to like my motorcycles. You could eat your lunch. You could eat your breakfast off the crankcase, you know. <laughs> oh, that's spotless and immaculate, you know. But I was never content because I didn't know Father. I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know the Holy Ghost. I didn't know the Scriptures. I never had the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, that's why I respect, fear God and love God so much today because He first loved me to call me into His kingdom, into His uh, power, salvation, blessing, into His presence. This is why we need, you know, fear the Lord. David, King David, we started in Psalm 34. This whole series started in Psalm 34. Come and I'll teach you the fear of the Lord. Come and I'll teach you how you can respect the Lord. But if you were used to say to someone, I'll fear the Lord, it's sort of just like one quote, isn't it? Oh, that's it. And they go, oh, I I, I must fear him as, as, as I would a brutal father or something that's bashing me all the time. And many have had that. You know? But no. Revere him. You know, take faith in him. Esteeming the highest and and accept what he said. Agree with what he said. Acknowledge what he says means do it. Right? Revere the Lord. That's how we show our respect for God. As Jesus even showed his respect for Father. To do it his way and not his own way. Like you see on the TV tonight, if you turn it on, the new show, My Way. It's all prophetic. It, it, it all speaks, doesn't it? As the Lord said, watch and pray. Watch and talk to me. Watch and let my word talk to you. Watch and pray. Be where? Because your adversary is not your friend. The tempter is not your friend. Your adversary, the devil, goes about like a roaring lion. No, he's not a lion. There's only one lion in the Bible. One real one, and it ain't Lippy the lion, and hearty ha ha, it's Jesus. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen? The lion lamb, lamb lion. The other one is a pretender, gummy bear. The devil is a gummy bear. Gummy bears, gummy bears. He can't do jack. Did you know that? Jesus defeated the devil at the tree. Are you running with Jesus? You're on the, on the winner's list. Hey? He defeated the principalities and powers of darkness at the tree. Can we go to Colossians? Please, Colossians, Colossians. Hey? 
that lovely rain. I reckon our sign out there will be floating down the road by now. That little one. <laughs> Colossians chapter 2. And let's read verse 15. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. You get that? Right? Disar- they're armless, eh? They've got no arms. When you see the devil coming for you, going. I'm going to bash you. You say, what do you got? You ain't got no arms, you ain't. Disarmed them. At the tree. Didn't even use his hands. Didn't have to touch him. He just done it. Hey, our awesome Saviour just done it. He basically said, "Nail my hands, and I'll disarm you." Oi! Nail me to the tree. It it it's, it pays to revere the Lord and to bow down before Him, to live your life for Him. Then I will be a father to you. When I first came to the Lord, you know, my dad was typical Irishman. Played the violin, drank a lot of beer, a lot of Guinness. He'd fight anyone. He wasn't a little bloke, he was a 5'11". Maybe 5'11 and a half. He's a hard-working man, done hard work, hard labour, carpentering work. Not, not when they, the carpentering they have today. This was hammer, six-inch nails and a handsaw. They were carpentering when he was carpentering. Um... And he never really had much time to spend with me between his drinking and playing music. And he was in a band. And they used to go out, play, in certain hotels. So I never really had that father figure. So I ran wild. and I seen him drinking, so I was drinking. And uh, never really had that father figure. But I came, came across a missionary, as they call him. This guy took his wife and children into the jungle of New Guinea, where they said not to go. The denomination said not to go. He had about seven children or so. They said, you're crazy. You need to do this and that. He went in there and he, he spoke to the uh, tribe people. One souls to the Lord. No famous man in the eyes of religious organisations, but powerful anointing on him. And I was at a meeting, a home meeting, and he pointed at me and he said, I, I want to pray over you, son, because he's a lot older than me. And when he put his hand on my back, it felt like that his hand was at least two foot square when he put his hand on my back and he said I want to tell you son that father is going to be the father that you never had to you and it just blew me out you know I was just like frozen you know and I didn't want to let it go either let it go, let it go. I was just frozen, you know, I was just transfixed. And I never forget that day. And it always comes back to me that I will be your father 
And if you can think of anything good that a father could do for his child or children, Father in Heaven would, would trumpet multiple millions of times. I will be a father. But you see, what comes before he said that, we see it clearly, don't we? And in Second Corinthians six, right, talks about what fellowship has the righteous with the lawless? What communion has darkness with light? What accord has Christ with the devil? What part has a believer with an unbeliever? I mean, all this has to be attended to if we want Father, the Lord Almighty, to be our Father. Come on. Hallelujah. Right? All this has to be dealt with. And I will be a Father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters. I mean, you can be the son or the daughter of a wealthy man or, or, or a famous man or a famous uh, person in the world. But I tell you what, to be a son and a daughter of God, come on, the struggle is over. The, the, the resentment is over. The, the unforgiveness is over. The selfishness is over. The hatred is over. The racism is over. The, the believing in lies is over. It's all over. As Jesus said, it's finished. He made the way for us to come to Father so that everything could be over and Father could be our Father. And many, many, many people have sad, miserable, resentful stories about their father. What he done to me. What my mother done to me. There, I counselled a young man one time. His mother was molesting him. You know, when he was a young man. It's not just men. It's not just men doing things. Bad things. It's, it, it's not just women doing bad things to their children. It's across the board. But we have a guarantee that Father will be your Father. If you will take he, if you will accept and, and acknowledge and, and agree with His Word and do it, it's going to transpire. You're going to have the greatest Father in the universe. <laughs> the ancient of days and all inclusive in the package is to have a brother who is the rock of ages and then to have a teacher who is a ghost hallelujah the paraclete all inclusive why wouldn't you why wouldn't you want to fear the Lord hey Paul is teaching us here through the Corinthian writings. He's teaching us how to fear the Lord and to get the benefits thereof. Hey? Because 2 Corinthians 6, 14 makes it clear if we depart, if we make a dividing line between the righteous and the unrighteous. If we don't fellowship with the unrighteous, we're going to be pleasing, we're going to be revering our God. And if we don't commune with darkness, we're going to be revering. But if we're communing with darkness, as the churches of today practice and promote <coughs> to hang around with the ungodly, the unsaved and the unrighteous and those who walk in darkness which is contrary to this 
the churches of today don't fear the Lord. They don't respect God. So as a man of God, I must warn you to stay clear of these churches, the all-inclusive churches, the once saved, always saved churches, the oneness modelism churches, the one world churches. They're not the church of the Christ. They're not of the holy remnant because it makes it clear in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and the verses 15. And what accord is Christ with the devil? The holy with the unholy. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Hey? And what and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? You are the temple. What agreement do you have with idols? Because we are the temple. And God will dwell in them and walk among them and will be their God and they shall be his people. Come on. We don't worship, fellowship, commune with God from a distance. We're not like the Pentecostals when the preacher gets in the pulpit. He asks for Holy Spirit to come. What a load of hogwash. We just read it then. I will dwell in them. Why are you asking for him to come? (coughs) He's indwelling. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And where two or more are gathered in His name, He is in the midst. You don't have to ask Him to come. He is in the midst. This is all the hocus pocus, isn't it? It's all just show and pretense and, and, and serving with the lips, the lip serving and shebang, shaboom. You know, it's all just flowery show, and pretense. And when you have a close look, and what's going down, and you listen carefully to what's being said, it's empty, and there's no, there's no progression for those people. They will be stuck with the perils of not progressing. They will be bearded babies. They will never grow or go or glow for God. Amen? And what of Hebrews 10? Can we go there to Hebrews 10? Respecting the Lord. Fearing the Lord. Hebrews 10 and the verse is. 7. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will Oh God, you see that? That Jesus came to do Father's will. No one else's. Even Jesus, who suffered unto death, obey unto death, come to do Father's will. If it's good enough for Jesus to do Father's will, if it's required, if it was required of Jesus to do Father's will, how much more is it required of us to do Father's will? One John, can we go there, please? One John, Hallelujah. One John. Chapter 2. And the verse is 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of Father, 
but is of the world and the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does the will of God. You see that changes then from Father to God. Does the will of God. That's the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. God is the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen? But Jesus is not Jesus. Jesus is not Father and Jesus is not Holy Ghost. So, Jesus tells us to do the will of the Father. Father tells us to exalt Jesus. And the Holy Ghost confirms that, doesn't he? And he says that he will speak of Jesus. Because that's the way the script, the movie, that's the way it's written. They're all working together. Jesus wants us to be one with him as he is with Father in full of, full agreements. Amen. The love of Father is not in him. See the emphasis on Father. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the solid, the Adamic is not of Father. But it's of the world. See, the last of the eyes, last of the pride of life come from Eden. Passed down to us. But we want to do Father's will. Amen? John 5.30. We want to do Father's will. John 5.30. My Bible says, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of myself. No, the will of the Father who sent him. Father sent him. You see that? It shows you how shabby, wicked, devilish oneness is that Israel Falaus and his old man are into. It, I mean, it's very clear, isn't it? Are you, do you, what are you going to do? Are you going to do your own will? Oh, God, the churches say it all the time. Oh, God didn't make you to, to suffer, you know. God wants you to really. Enjoy yourself. He wants you to be happy. But what does the scripture say? Hey? It says that Jesus speaking in the red writing, as I hear, I judge. He's listening to who? Is he listening to himself? No, he's listening to Father. And my judgment is righteous. Why is it righteous? Because it's not his. Jesus' judgment is not self-righteous. You know, when I judge as a man of God, it's not self-righteous. You know why? Because I use the scripture. I don't, I don't use my own view. I'm using... The, Jesus said the words I speak judge you. <laughs> These words are judging Israel Folau's old man for lying and Israel Folau for lying. These words are judging him to be a liar. Because there is a Father, there is a Son, and there is a Holy Ghost. I witness the Father, I witness the Son and I witness the Holy Ghost. I witness the, the infallible scripture. I witness that Jesus said, I'm going home now to Father. I'm not leaving you abandoned and orphaned. I'm going to send another. He is, he is the Holy Ghost. I witness that. And then I witness that the Holy Ghost said 
I will not speak of myself and exalt myself. I will speak of Him who sent me, Jesus. Are you listening? Amen? So we've got to get all this sorted so we can get in there to the zenith. And there's no hairy fairy. There's no angel dust. And there's con for money and these lies of healing and they're not even healed. It's just all emotional. Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones. Emotional rescue. Who, 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 uh, who, who, who. And everyone's there. Because you wouldn't need the hoopla. You wouldn't need the bing bong. You wouldn't need the big band. You wouldn't need the chorus girls. You wouldn't need the electric guitar screaming if you had the real deal. Because Paul never had that. Peter never had that. Peter was standing in the street and someone walked past and w- walked past in through his shadow and was healed. Where's the chorus girls? Where's the bing bong? Where's the electric guitars? Where's the strobe lights? Where's the chicks? Where's the... Hell, oh, hell, oh. These people will burn. The Lord's earmarked them for hell. With the, with the thieves... And the immoral, the liar is in the midst. The coward's there too. The coward is the one that won't speak up and proclaim what they know is truth. They won't open their mouth. They say, all right, you give me a position in your football team and you can zip tie my mouth as long as I get my 1.5 million. But I'll let you zip tie me now. I'll become a mute for Messiah. Hey? They got these sayings in these hoopla churches, you know, preach without speaking. <laughs> because the arrogance and the pride, stinking rotten pride of men and women today is so high. It's so unprecedented today you can't tell no one nothing they don't want to bash you they don't want to stick you with a knife you can't tell them don't preach to me I had a guy say that to me on the street you know not so long but you keep preaching mate I don't want to hear you preaching shut your mouth or I'm going to smash you I just kept preaching and he just kept mouthing. But he never did anything. Because he's so convicted. You see, that's where the real conviction comes from. It comes from the word, the spoken word of God. You know, you've got these clowns in churches all over the world. They're making millions and millions of dollars selling books about spiritual warfare, binding up bungi wungi wungi. And, and oh, I've got a book, it's about the Sasabatadanda uh, spirit and we're going to bind it up and call down fire call it down fire you won't have to call it down mate you'll be in prison uh, in hell with it all over you <laughs> call it down fire oh get out of here please that made me sick just preach the blinking word and everyone said amen people ask me what about your spiritual warfare is it, have you been fasting? I said, no, I love me curry pies too much, mate. Sorry about that. Fasting? What for? I've got God within. I'm not trying to get in touch with him. Hello? Ding, 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 ding. I'm just trying to get in touch. Oh, there must be too many on the line. Hey? Do you fast much? What have I got to fast for? Just say no to the stinking devil. <laughs> There's no fasting about it. Because when you come off your fast, you're going to go back ten times more. Because you're going to be starving for your sin. Hello? It, it's time to just say, Jesus, just slay me. Just crucify me now. And every other minute of the day, I'm loving it. It's called a celebration. Of discipline, and everyone said amen. amen. Right? They got these books, millions and millions of dollars. Derek Prince, 
You know, he knows every demon in town. Oh, have you? You know, people think they're, tell, they're going to give me something great. Oh, I've got this book at home I'd like you to have. It, it's from Derek Prince. I said, oh, yeah. What's it about? Demons. Ah, oh, come on. What that? Do you read the Bible? I ain't got no power over you. Not even the devil has power over you, let alone his minions. He submit to God. What's it say? The devil's going to hang around and pound you. No, it says he's going to flee. So doesn't that tell you? Doesn't that tell you that you only have to do one thing for the devil to flee? No, I'm not talking about demons. I'm talking about the devil himself. The leader of darkness. Hey? But there's someone who has power over the darkness. He's the one that I walk with. He's the one I love and who loves me. He's the one that's indwelling. He in me is greater than he that's in the world. Oh. Didn't they tell you that? No, they wanted to make more money. So they just kept telling me I had a demon of Wungi Bungi. And, and, and when I go back and do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again, I'm just keep going down, down, deeper and down with status quo. Amen? And they just keep saying, oh, you must have went back to that demon. You, you've let him back in. He came in through the bathroom window just to find the silver spoon. You've let him back in the window. Oh. Shut the blinking thing and leave it shut. <laughs> Pen it off. Better still, just leave the house. Just give up your sin. Oh, that, that's very hard, you know, especially when you're not born again. <laughs> From above, but I'm born again, born again, born again. Oh, right. Born again, born again, born again. Okay, so you're not a new creature. You're still the old, mo- old mate going on, old mate. Yeah, and loving it, yes. So you're not new. So the old things haven't passed away. They're still there. But with the new creature, old has passed away. It's going to pass away? Or has it passed away? Old has passed away. How much is new? Well, we're transitioning here. We're transitioning. Just the sweet transvestite. Transitioning. No. It says brand new. New creature. New. New, new, new. You know, you make me feel brand new. You do. But we've got all this garbage religious teaching come out of Bible colleges and all the voodoo that America and the One World Church can offer to prop you up, to make you look like that you're not such a bad person after all. No. Sorry. The Lord says you're deserving hellfire. I don't care what your sin was before you come to Jesus. No demon has any power over you once you're born again from above. You're born of the water of the Word and the Spirit of God. Once that happens and you have full awareness of it and you're growing in the Lord as a babe, right, as a babe, Becoming more aware of what he's given you. It's like the disciples said, increase our faith. Now there's no increasing the faith. There's only one measure. God is not a fool. God did not give you a, a, a measure of faith. So, oh, I better increase it now. Hogwash. He told his disciples to use what they had. They said, increase our faith. He said, no. He said, look, it's got nothing to do with amounts. If you had the faith of a seed, a mustard seed, you could tell that mountain. It's got nothing to do with increase. 
Because we don't read Jesus saying, Oh, sorry, fellas, I mustn't have given you enough. I'll increase now. And he pressed an increase button. No, the Bible doesn't talk about your faith increasing. It talks about you. You. Understanding. Increasing in understanding and knowledge of what he's given you. Through the doctrine. Through the word. As we walk along, we come to know more and more what he's given. The faith, doesn't, it's the same. He's given you a measure before you were even born again. He give you a measure. You know, there's people in the world, they have a measure of faith they haven't accessed. They haven't utilised it. It's just sitting there. God is not unfair. He, he desires that not one parent. I knew you before you entered the womb. <laughs> Oh, you gave me enough faith. Oh, you didn't give me enough faith. Oh, so, oh, oh sorry. My bad. Oh, my bad. My fails. Sorry, Peter. I didn't give you enough faith. Oh, what am I doing? What am I thinking? My bad. No. No, 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 no. No, he give you the measure... Utilise it. Utilise it. You know, if you want to increase the awareness of what God has given you, cease from your sin. <laughs> You've got the most powerful person in the universe with you. He's called the paraclete. Nothing is impossible with thee. Great and mighty God, full of wonder and mighty indeed. Amen. Nothing is impossible. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things by doing it Jesus' way. And Jesus' way was Father's way. Jesus' doctrine is Father's doctrine. He said, my doctrine is not mine. My doctrine is his who sent me. And everyone said amen. amen. Okay, we're going to finish up with John 6, 38. Can we go there? Hey? Fear Father. Fear Father. Our message to revere. Fear Father. Respect Father. John 6, 38. What does it say in my Bible? For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. What do you think of that? You like that? Where did he come from? He came from the womb of Mary, did he? Where did he come from originally? It says he come down from heaven. Is that right? That knocks the old Roman Catholics around a bit, that one. I have come down from heaven. <laughs> Hang on. Not to, not to do my own will. He, he, that's a person. My own will. Red writing, Jesus. But the will of him who sent me. Now listen. This is the will of Father. Who sent him? Father. That of all he has given me, I shall lose nothing, but should raise it up in the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, of Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. You see that? You see? Father and the Son. This is the will of the Father who sent me. That all he has given me, I shall lose nothing. And that's the one saved, always saved. They always go to that scripture to say, oh, you can't forfeit your salvation. No, Jesus ain't losing anyone. We lose track of him. In our selfish lives, we walk away 
and we go backwards as multiple 80, 90 plus scriptures say we forsake him. But he's not going to lose anyone that commits their lives to him. You ever notice the scriptures talk about he who commits sin is not born of God. You see that? You see? Brother Blade read that this morning, didn't you, Brother Blade? He who commits sin. Do you notice the word commit? They're committed to it. They're committed to that sin. Instead of being committed to God. (laughs) He who is committed to sin and they continue on and do that rather than do what God said. They're flogged by the devil. That's why the Bible says submit. Commit your life to God. Submit to God and the devil will flee. That's why you got all these demons, you know. Oh, oh, the demon's doing this, the demon's doing that. Oh, you better get the demon book to show you how to get out of it. No, no, no. The Bible shows you how to escape every snare. The Bible shows you how to be victorious. The Word of God is suffice. He hasn't left anything out. He's gone so far, He's even put His Spirit in you. The power of God in you. Dunamis power. But yet they say, oh no, well, you know, I'm transvestiting. I mean, I'm transitioning. I'm, I'm, I'm butterflying. I'm cocooning. You know, I'm sort of... That's the excuse all the time for repetitive, going on and repetitive known sin. And then they throw a bit of God as love on the end. And don't judge. (laughs) Whatever you do, he'll he'll bring the walls on top of you. Don't judge. But even though the Lord said judge within the house, because if you can't judge within the house of God in the local church, how are you going to judge angels? Anyway, I think this is a nice scripture to finish with. I really like the John chapter 7, 17. Let's start in 16. My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. Here we go again. Two people in there. There's two people here. Amen, Sister Shana. Two people. Yes. My doctrine is not mine, but him, his who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will... He shall know concerning the doctrine whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. You see that? You want to do Father's will? You're going to know the true Jesus doctrine. Without a doubt. See how easy he makes it? If you want to do his will. He'll, he'll make it. He, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it's from some crummy, photocopy, denominational, demonized, garbage, orthodox religion, or whether it's from God Almighty. You see the price you pay? There's a price. You've got to pay a price for anything. I don't care what you get, you're going to pay the price. You're going to pay the price. It ain't free. Does that scripture say it's free? You're going to have to pay. You're going to have to give up your will to know his will. Can't have both. And then you'll know the doctrine. That's why I'm so sure. I'm so sure that the doctrine in this church... Is Jesus' doctrine. I am beyond sure. And I've challenged everyone that's come through the door and more on the internet everywhere. Show me where I'm wrong. Show me. 
and I'll repent publicly, change the doctrine and adjust it, rectify it and get right with God. If you say I'm wrong and you don't show me where I'm wrong, you don't love me. So you're not of God anyway. Because if you see your brother in sin and you don't tell him, you don't love him. You're a hypocrite. Someone can say amen if you like. So what I teach here is wrong. Please show me. Explain it to me. But you must explain it from the scriptures. Not some uh, paraphrased Bible. I don't go there. You know, when I came to the Lord, I had a beautiful collection of Matthew Henry. Well, actually, let me say, I was a baby in Jesus and I, I bought a, um, a date annotated, annotated Bible. I thought I was God, you know. I had a date leather bound. I mean, they're 120 bucks back then. I don't know how much now. And the Lord spoke to me and said, throw it in the bin. Because it had expo- exposition then. And then I bought Matthew Henry's collection. Wow. And then the Lord said, throw that in the bin. <laughs> he said, because I'm going to raise you up. I made you child and I know you well. I made you child and I know And I called you with a holy calling Before you were born I anointed you Before you were born I anointed you And I called you with a holy calling Bow energies Oh son of thunder Bow energies Oh, son of thunder, proclaim these words I give to you today. I can't proclaim anything else. I can't. It has to be what the Lord says. So let me rest there and say... If anyone has any problem with what I say, please correct me. I love to be judged. I'm contrary to the religious hypocrites who say don't judge. Judge me hard. Judge me fast. Let the righteous smite me. Not a fool. Let the righteous smite me. It's like oil running down onto the beard of Aaron. And everyone said... And amen, and amen. Our message today, fear Father. Respect Him. Praise Him for what He's done. Hey? What He shows us. What He gives us. If you do what I say, then I'll be your Father. No other time.